We're not flirting with fringe ideas here, folks. The priorities I just listed should be easy. These concepts aren't controversial, at least not to the folks who spend more of their time outside of the Capitol building than inside of it. Governor Tony Evers delivering his budget address. Our editorial partner, WISPolitics.com, crunching the numbers. The governor's budget would spend nearly $104 billion during the course of two years. In terms of general purpose revenue, that's a spending increase of more than 23% in the first year before dropping about 1% in the second. First stop, the Joint Finance Committee. State Senator Howard Markline joins us from Madison. He's co-chair of the Joint Finance Committee. Senator, thanks for your time and welcome back to the show. Thank you. We heard the governor's budget address previously this week, you said right after that Republicans are going to go back to base in terms of rebuilding this budget. Other Republicans have essentially said, let's shove this aside and start over. Is that at all disingenuous given those comments were made before even reading the governor's budget and his proposal? We're going to do the same thing we did the last budget. And that is, we're going to go back to base and work off of the base. That is, we're going to work off the existing uh, budget and then uh, you know, make the um, necessary adjustments to that. Um, we've done that in the past, and I uh, expect that the process will be very similar to what we did in the last budget. The governor is proposing increases to spending from the current base. Uh, are you open to that at all, or do you want to maintain levels from this current budget? Well, the governor proposed spending increases in the first year of almost 24%. I can certainly understand uh, that inflation has hit the state of Wisconsin, but 24% uh, seems like a pretty excessive amount of spending. My guess is that in the end, we're not going to end up anywhere close to a 24% increase in spending. But there may be some increases in spending, especially given inflation, as you just mentioned. Yeah, so I, you know, I mean, inflation has hit the state of Wisconsin just like it's hit our families. You know, our costs have gone up. Um, uh, you know, the cost of, of government's gone up. I've got um, prisons in my district. They're trying to hire employees and, you know, it, the costs are going to go up. You know, I, I recognize that and we recognize that. But, uh, you know, 24 percent is a pretty big pill for us to swallow. Taxes are going to be a big part of this conversation. The governor wants a 10 percent tax cut, he says, targeting the middle class, certain income levels. Republicans want a flat income tax. I'm curious where these conversations go, especially since the governor has said he could veto a flat tax. Sure. So and you know, one thing the governor did was uh, in his budget proposal was he first raises taxes on people in order to give them a tax cut. And I think that's uh, kind of disingenuous. You're robbing Peter to pay Paul. And um, our tax uh, cut will be uh, uh, hopefully across the board. Um, you know, we're still working on, on the details of that. You mentioned the state surplus. What do you think of the governor's proposal to give nearly $300 million to the stadium district here in Milwaukee in, in an attempt to keep the brewers here in the state? Sure. You know, that's his idea. Um, you know, we haven't uh, talked about it at, as a caucus. We may consider that idea as we work through the uh, budget process here over the, the next several months. Do you, have you talked with team or stadium district officials or do you plan to in the coming weeks? I have not spoken to anybody uh, with the Brewers. Is there a scenario in your mind where the team would get zero state funding? I don't know. You know, I mean, we just uh, heard about the uh, proposal a few days ago. We weren't consulted uh, ahead of the, uh, the announcement. So um, we haven't talked about it, uh, it, it here in the legislature, in our caucus. I need to listen to the, the, the public, too. You know, we'll have public hearings coming up, and I need to listen to my constituents and, and see what they think about that proposal. The governor is also spending a significant amount of time talking about his proposal to essentially create a new state program for paid family or medical leave, initially investing some $240 million of state money into that, then going to an employee-employer contribution. Does that have any support uh, among Republicans in these early stages of talks in, in the past few hours? We haven't had a chance to talk about that. Uh, you know, it, it's to me, from what I've read, it sounds like another uh, government program, another tax on employers and employees. And uh, so, you know, my, my initial reaction is I, I doubt if it's going to have much support in, in our caucus. Do you think you'll get to a point where the governor will sign what budget he receives? I can't predict what the governor is going to do. I want to craft the best possible budget for the state of Wisconsin, something I'm proud of, something that uh, our constituents uh, will like back home and uh, is good for the state of Wisconsin, that puts the state of Wisconsin in good financial shape two years from now, four years from now. 
And, uh, and then it's up to the governor as to do uh, what, whatever he wants to do with it. Some incredibly busy weeks and months ahead. State Senator Howard Markline, co-chair of the Joint Finance Committee. Senator, thank you, like always, for your time. Thank you. Up next, two days until primary day, the Supreme Court candidates, their closing arguments with Jaron next.